Welcome back to Jazz Biz Buzz. As promised, we are here in Karachi with a new industry and a new leader. Today, we are here in Indus Pharma with Mr. Zahid Saeed, and we are going to be engaging in conversation with him today. Assalamu alaikum ji. Wa alaikum assalam. I am good. How are you? Allah ka shukr ji, bilkul thik thak. So, how long have you been associated with this business? How did it all begin? Uh, give us a little bit about your professional history. Well, this company started around 52 years ago in 1969. and uh, it's a family business so after my education i joined the business also mm -hmm. back in uh, 1990 mm -hmm. so it's around uh, 31 years now that i've been with this business that's a long time yeah, it's long time yeah absolutely so you've been uh, uh, pharma industry has been booming uh, throughout the last couple of years even more so than before uh, we are living in unprecedented times and you know the vaccinations and the covid all of this is you know the topic of every discussion on every dinner every yeah. uh, meeting etc so what role has indus pharma played in this entire uh, mizanzan you see uh, um, this entire episode has pr proven one thing and that the pharma industry of pakistan is a robust industry while uh, during the covid even the common medicines around the globe were sh short and uh, in short supply generally speaking uh, uh, it's good to know that pakistan pharma industry uh, did provide all the medicines everything was almost available here mm -hmm. and the very specific medicines for covid even they were manufactured in pakistan very quickly in a very short while mm -hmm. in a couple of months we were able to develop uh, many companies in pakistan were able to develop remdesivir which was the critical critical need in, needed injection and it was globally short and in fact the industry was able to export it from pakistan to many countries so wow, so this shows the capability of the industry mm -hmm. how quickly we can adapt and how quickly we can uh, ensure that the supply chain of uh, uh, pharmaceutical products in pakistan remains um, always uh, available that's that's good um kuch baat karte hain pharmaceutical ke sath jo perceptions attached hoti hain uh, pakistan mein bahut sare log kehte hain ki local dawaiyon se itna fayda nahi hoga imported dawai mangwa ke use karni chahiye but we we see that pharma industry is actually booming in pakistan so what do you think is there anything that you guys have done to tackle this kind of perception or do you think ki ye bas You see the perception. We have come a long way. The national pharmaceutical industry. Uh, when I started uh, and I joined the business in 1990, the national companies had a 20% share in the market, mm. and 80% share was for the multinationals. Mm. Now it's just the reverse. Mm. In this 32 years now, 70% of the market is with the national companies, mm. and only 30% is with multinationals. Mm. and the 30% of the market which remains with the multinationals even a, a very healthy portion out of that is being manufactured by the national companies for them mm -hmm. so even that segment much of it is done by the national companies for the multinationals so this shows that the equal equal standards are prevalent uh, we don't have a standard of our own we follow the international standards normally mm -hmm. and when you follow the global standards this is science this is not magic mm. so uh, i mean it's it's a very naive thing to say that a particular drug in pakistan would be less effective than uh, anywhere else in the world and mm. even in the developed market why because the specifications mm. of the chemical which is the potent chemical of the drug which we call the active pharmaceutical ingredient api is the same mm. it is the same specification is the same standards it's manufactured up to the same specs mm. so it is more of a perception and i think it's uh, somewhat ek jo hamari zehni kafiyat hai we are always impressed by a thing which is uh, which which is imported you know mm. so that is more i think in play Hmm. when we say that the drugs in pakistan is less effective uh, let's talk about a little bit of r and d as well pakistan ke andar uh, pharmaceuticals ke andar r and d departments maujood hain lekin uh, you know experimental drugs clinical trials and all of these things this is still unheard of in pakistan why do you think that is kahi hum lag kar rahe hain kahi hame aage jaane ki zarurat hai yeah i think the right ecosystem is not there hmm. in pakistan there has to be a very strong academia and uh, industry linkage mm -hmm. and uh, while we see a lot of drug inventions in the west uh, a lot of this is outsourced by the industry to the universities for research they design the research for them and then outsource to the universities mm -hmm. and you start with 100000 molecules you end up with two or three mm -hmm. 
uh, which are commercialized. Mm -hmm. So it's, it's a very expensive process. It takes between one and two billion dollars mm -hmm. to develop and commercialize a molecule, a mm -hmm. single molecule. Mm -hmm. And then also it takes uh, six or seven years also to do this. And this is most of the work is outsourced and uh, uh, then it comes back and, you know, this sort of muscle is not present with the industry of Pakistan. Mm -hmm. The total industry size is three and a half billion dollars and we are talking about a one and a half to two billion dollars of research into one molecule. Yeah. So you can imagine that we don't have the muscle, uh, muscle to do that. Yeah. That's another aspect. But what, what do we do in research? It's mm -hmm. very important for the people to know in Pakistan. Uh, like for COVID, we were very quickly uh, able to adapt mm -hmm. and bring in the COVID specific drugs in Pakistan very quickly. Mm -hmm. And the industry made sure that the drug is freely available in Pakistan mm -hmm. and it is even exported. Mm -hmm. So we were able to cope up with this situation. Mm -hmm. Another important aspect is that whenever drug is launched in globally, mm -hmm. uh, that particular company which is launching a drug probably in, U in UK or USA or anywhere else or Japan, mm -hmm. they may not be interested to launch that drug in Pakistan for many, many years. Mm -hmm. uh, for many reasons, it could be economic reason, it mm -hmm. could be their priority, it could be their marketing mm -hmm. um, uh, strategy, whatever. Mm -hmm. So what do we do? We quickly uh, do the research on that. We mm -hmm. bring in the originator mm -hmm. and uh, the industry in Pakistan does the research on that. We replicate that product mm -hmm. and uh, in a few months time, mm -hmm. the product is ready to be launched in Pakistan. Mm -hmm. Now what happens is that these new discoveries, usually if you see even a, for example, a diabetic drug, which is being launched in uh, USA nowadays, mm -hmm. the, it will be priced like $1,200 per pack or something. Mm -hmm. And when it comes to Pakistan, it is 1200 rupees. Mm -hmm. So the perception is still goes as per the Pakistani earning standards, that 1,200 rupee drug is a, is a massive Difference. cost, you know. Mm. Um, probably 20 tablets, 1,200 rupees. Mm. People think it's a very expensive thing. Mm. But what we are bringing in is sold at $1,200 internationally and we are bringing it down. The cost is mm. cut down and the availability time is cut down. Mm. So what we uh, provide is an advantage to the Pakistan mm. public is that that particular treatment becomes available very early mm. and at a very, very affordable, affordable price. Right. Yeah. If it is imported from the West, you just cannot afford, nobody can afford it, not even the rich people. Mm. Got talk about middle class and the uh, low, low income people. While we are talking about the costing of these drugs, I, I do believe that there are some uh, diseases that have become very common in Pakistan. Cancer, every other household has a cancer patient now. Dementia, Alzheimer's, osteoporosis, all of these diseases have become really, really common uh, in Pakistan. But the treatments are still expensive. You know, when you go to hospitals and when you have to go for chemo and when you have to go for radiation, the treatments are still very, very expensive. I mean, a part of it is correct. Part of it needs to be, you know, understood. Uh, we don't do many oncology drugs in Pakistan. Mm. And there is reason because the economy of a scale is not there. Mm. Although the prevalence of cancer and its diagnosis is now more common. common. Mm. Otherwise, probably even 30 years ago, the prevalence was there, but people even did not get it diagnosed and they just died like that, you know, mm. undiagnosed. Mm. So now the diagnosis is there, uh, identification happens, uh, but still the volume is so low that it is not uh, feasible to put up a plant for specifically those drugs, unless you have a plan to provide and make that drug available locally and also export it. Mm. So if, you, if you're looking at the global market, okay, it becomes feasible. Mm. For specifically Pakistan market, mm. and, and many of these drugs are biological drugs. Mm. And biological drugs are not very common to be done in Pakistan yet. Uh, another factor is that in, in such diseases and in such expensive medicine, there is definitely a government sort of a buyback guarantee on the drugs. Mm. That's why we don't do vaccines in Pakistan. Mm. Because vaccines are always administered uh, by the state, by the government. Mm. Even if you see the common... Uh, package of vaccines which is administered to infants mm. for uh, certain seven, eight diseases which, mm. which are commonly prevalent in infants only 
and also the polio thing. Mm. So um, it's it's always a government buyback that enables the pharmaceutical industry to produce those. Mm. Uh, a, a very, very uh, um, recent example is that unless the US government and the European governments had promised mm. and they had committed to buy back the COVID vaccines, they would never have been produced mm. because there was no feasibility in the private sector. Absolutely. Absolutely. And the government, even in Pakistan, had to give a, a buyback thing to, you know, make the stocks available in Pakistan. Mm. So this is how it happens all the time in the West mm. and in the developed world. Mm. In Pakistan, the government generally mm. for meningitis or typhoid or diphtheria, mm. they don't have a buyback guarantee. Mm. So the only thing remains is they are imported. Mm. When you import them, you are at the mercy of the exporters from there and you get expensive medicine. Mm. Same is happening with the oncology drugs. The rest of it, I think we are pretty much competitive with the region. While you're talking about the academic ecosystem that doesn't exist in Pakistan, but I think there are some other industries who can actually help build a better ecosystem where you can uh, support your own business and growth in terms of growth, in terms of, you know, CSR activities, etc., etc. So do you think that uh, relying upon a connectivity partner or relying mm -hmm. upon uh, IoT, uh, AI-based uh, partner for the manufacturing of your drugs, do you see that that potential is existing in Pakistan at the moment? Yeah, surely. I think uh, um, um, the communication and uh, um, and these all, all these systems have really changed the scenario. Mm -hmm. Even our field force now, um, uh, it's, it's, it's tracked by AI and uh, definitely we have an association with Jazz also on that and uh, we are successfully doing it. Uh, this is not only tracking your people, it's about tracking the availability of uh, medicine in the right place at the right time mm -hmm. and to know that uh, you are able to provide the service at the doorstep where it is really needed. Uh, Pakistan is not about six or seven big cities. Mm. Uh, Eighty percent of the population lives out there in the rural areas, and you have to have the outreach there. Mm. Uh, there are isolated doctors sitting, mm. and and this very small clinics, and even the BHUs of the government. And these places, they need to have the right uh, um, information available. They need to have the right uh, uh, product available, the awareness available, mm. and uh, somehow this connectivity has uh, helped us to uh, reach out. And I think this is one of the reasons. Actually, if we see the growth of pharma industry, why we talk about that, because the outreach is increasing. Mm. Because, of, because of all this technology and, and involvement of technology into an integration of the technology with us, uh, it has helped us to increase our outreach to the right place mm -hmm. uh, in the rural areas, to the isolated places. Or wahan par jahan log dawa istamal nahi karte the, either they used alternate medicine or they used Hakeem. some hakim ka ya koi tot ka unhon ne kar liya ya unhon ne cpi se jaake taweez le liya bimari ke liye. So I think this awareness now has um, uh, enabled us to reach to the right patient mm -hmm. uh, in the right place at the right time. Mm -hmm. uh, isme puri jo, jo tracking hoti hai, ab, aapki uske andar ham, uh, jo hamari product hai, usko right storage mein or right logistics mein with the right temperatures is sab ke andar hame help milti hai so i think it is it will it, it has definitely helped us to uh, increase the outreach uh, to uh, make the product available uh, in the right storage conditions in the right logistics conditions mm -hmm. so i think uh, complete ek pura ye package hai jo technology se jo hai sara improve hai aur change hua Thank you so much, Zahid Saab, for welcome, uh, coming here today and talking to us. It was a pleasure, uh, you know, engaging in discussion with you. I myself have learned a lot about the pharmaceutical industry. I did not know a lot of these things, and I'm sure that our viewers over here have also learned a thing or two. Yeah. So thank you so much for your presence. You're welcome. Pleasure to have you. Thank you. Um, so we will be back with another episode of Jazz Biz Bus soon enough. Stay tuned till then. Thank you, and Allah Hafiz. Jazz Business, designed to help you grow.